Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife, and thanks for joining us for our new 2018 fall season. We've got a great season lined up and a great show for you today. We're gonna to introduce you to the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission's newest division, the Research, Evaluation, and Compliance Division, and show you how they're using science to monitor the health of fish and wildlife populations around the state. A little later in the show, we'll unveil a new feature we'll be showing you from time to time where we explore different facilities Game and Fish has across Arkansas. This week, we're headed to Fort Smith in the Janet Huckabee Arkansas River Valley Nature Center. But first, we want to show you a basic overview of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission, a piece called Legacy of Conservation, exploring the agency's past as well as our present and future challenges. All that and this week's winner of a hunting and fishing license right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. Arkansas, the natural state. From the Ozarks and Washita's to the Delta and Coastal Plain, our nickname is well-deserved. And for more than a century, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has been working to keep the state true to its name. 28.6. The men and women of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission dedicate themselves daily to conserving the state's most precious natural resources. Managing the habitats that support fish and wildlife and provide public opportunities, to enforcing the state's hunting and fishing regulations, our work is all about passing along a conservation legacy to future generations. After European settlement and the widespread landscape changes that came with it, many species were either wiped out or pushed to the brink of extirpation. But the Game and Fish Commission boasts an impressive history of bringing back numerous species. There was a time when just seeing a deer track was cause for celebration, but now Arkansas hunters annually harvest more than 200,000 whitetails, including some extraordinary bucks. The Game and Fish Commission's mid-20th century work to restore black bears to the state is considered one of the most successful species reintroductions in the world. Land purchases and the construction of lakes have put quality outdoor experiences in reach of everyone, and the Commission's expansive hatchery system helps to maintain robust fish populations. Mandatory hunter and boating education has made the state's woods and waters safer for everyone. Keeping the natural state true to its name requires a concerted effort by nearly 600 employees. Wildlife officers work around the clock to ensure compliance with the state's hunting and fishing laws. Game and fish biologists use the latest science to ensure the long-term sustainability of game animals, as well as hundreds of other non-game species that are vital to maintaining healthy ecosystems. Managing wildlife means managing habitat, and game and fish actively manages more than 380,000 acres owned by the agency, in addition to working with conservation partners to help manage another 3 million acres of public land. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission operates five fish hatcheries that reinforce natural reproduction on the state's 600,000 acres of lakes and more than 90,000 miles of streams. More than 9.5 million fish were stocked last year, and fisheries managers spend countless hours on Arkansas streams and lakes to monitor fish populations and adapt regulations when necessary. There are more than 400 boat ramps and more than 75 fishing piers that provide public access to Arkansas waterways. 
Game and Fish operates four nature centers and four conservation education centers, which host more than a quarter of a million visitors each year. And a new education facility is under construction in Springdale. The agency's popular youth shooting sports and archery in the schools programs reach more than 60,000 Arkansas students every year. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission is also working to meet present and future challenges. Since the 2016 detection of chronic wasting disease in the state's deer and elk, Game and Fish has tested thousands of whitetails and established regulations to try to prevent the spread of this insidious disease. The creation of a research, evaluation, and compliance division, complete with the agency's first wildlife health veterinarian, will help Game and Fish confront CWD and other fish and wildlife issues with the latest science and most effective methods. Feral pigs remain a constant and serious threat to wildlife habitat and native fauna, which is why Game and Fish has devoted almost 65,000 man hours to remove close to 16,000 feral pigs from the landscape over the past five years. The agency's work to bring back the bobwhite quail has resulted in nearly 25,000 acres of quail-focused habitat projects in the past year alone. To maintain the natural state status as one of the continent's most important wintering areas for migratory waterfowl, Game and Fish is working to meet its goals under the North American Waterfowl Management Plan by managing more than 8,000 acres of important moist soil habitat. The agency recently embarked on a plan to conserve the forest and its green tree reservoirs by adapting water management strategies so future generations can enjoy the incredible green timber duck hunting that has made Arkansas famous. One of Game and Fish's newest and most important endeavors is its work to stem the decline in hunting and fishing participation that plagues states across the country. The agency has embarked on an ambitious mentored hunt program to introduce more Arkansans to the joys of the great outdoors and create a new cohort of conservationists who will carry an ethic of stewardship into the future. Conservation comes in many forms. It's getting your hands wet on a cold winter morning to keep tabs on fish populations. It's teaching someone to fish. It's a dedication to service with the knowledge that the work we do today will ensure a better Arkansas for tomorrow. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by the Arkansas Game and Fish Foundation. Support wildlife and conservation education in the natural state. Become a member today. Created in 1915, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has been managing fish and wildlife in the natural state for more than 100 years. A lot has changed about how we manage these resources in the state's various species, but the mission remains the same. With the creation of a new research, evaluation, and compliance division, Game and Fish is ensuring that the best science is available to enhance Arkansas's fish and wildlife. To accomplish its mission, Game and Fish uses something called science-based management. When people use the word science, they may be talking about a lot of different things. They could be talking about a specific field of science, like biology, or they could be talking about doing research, or they may just be talking about all of the information that researchers have gathered over the years. And that information builds on itself and helps us understand the resources we're trying to manage. In an ideal world, science and management will go hand in hand, or science may even precede management and, and give answers to questions that, that will drive then management actions. But we have to stick with the scientific principles to ensure that we're getting the best available information back to us that guides our, our management actions so we get the best returns on our native resources. Science-based management increases the likelihood that fish and wildlife are managed successfully. That's because information is gathered through careful research and then rigorously reviewed 
before it's used for management purposes. We use a lot of science at Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. We have biologists, we rely on specialists in hydrology, specialists in different species that understand the biology of those species right down to the details. The foundation of science is when you collect data using something we call the scientific method. And the scientific method is a set of steps that are used across specialties and across fields of science to make sure that the information we gather can be interpreted, essentially. You start with a question, you develop a hypothesis, you look at other research that's been in that area to help inform your hypothesis to make sure you're asking a question that you can actually answer. And then we design an experiment and we conduct this experiment and we either capture animals and tag them or we put radio collars on them, but we're trying to collect data, collect information. We'll bring that information back, we'll analyze it, and then we see was our hypothesis true or not. The final stage with that, when we cross the finish line, is we will publish our results. And this way we can get our information out there for, for other biologists and scientists to learn what we've conducted. Sometimes there are questions that are unique to Arkansas or that haven't been answered. That's when Game and & Fish and its partners conduct their own research. So right now we're working on a research project with American eels. We're trying to understand a downstream migration of silver eels. We're doing this to actually make a management recommendation. One things we wanted to understand is if changes to the operation of Felsenthal Lock and Dam were going to impact the migration of the American eels. We know that there are planned hydropower facilities on some of the dams on the Washita River and the Red River, and we get concerned that fish goes through a turbine, it could actually get ground up and killed. By understanding when they're coming through, you can actually make recommendations to shut down the turbines just during a narrow migration window and then it'll prevent the majority of the mortality that could occur for the year. Some of the most current research that we're going to be working on in the near future is looking at gathering population densities of our black bear population in the south central part of the state. Uh, we, we know bears are moving into that portion of the state from surrounding populations like the Washita's, like the upper Louisiana population, the White River population, all these bears are dispersing into that south central part of the state. And some of that information that we're hoping to gain through this upcoming research project is to have some baseline information, baseline information that we can go into after we have that information and establish a limited season uh, on black bears in the Gulf Coastal Plain, something that we've never had before. Because science-based management is so important to the Game and Fish Commission's mission, the agency created a new Research, Evaluation, and Compliance Division in 2016. This brought even more scientists into the agency and expanded research efforts, allowing Game and Fish to use cutting-edge science to make sound management decisions. The Research Division, we enhance the mission of the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission and its divisions through exploration, evaluating, and monitoring the best available science. This group is a highly specialized unit, so we have individuals that, that are focused on certain um, scientific principles. As far as we have a wildlife health specialist, we have a research specialist who understands all the scientific principles and how to understand, to, to think critically and answer our questions, our management related questions for our other divisions as we manage the resource. The Commission's fisheries and wildlife professionals don't just manage our state's resources. They are scientists who study living things and understand how to use scientific information to manage fish and wildlife populations. A passion for hunting and fishing inspired many game and fish biologists to seek jobs in conservation but it takes a lot of hard work and training to turn that passion into a career. I have a degree in wildlife management and ecology. I got a master's degree, so that would be uh, six years of college. I went through your basic uh, undergraduate degrees in fisheries and wildlife management, graduate degrees in biological sciences, uh, and just your standard coursework. Got my college degree in biology with a minor in chemistry. Uh, from there, went to grad school, uh, where I majored, uh, or got a master's in fishery science. Um, worked for a couple of years as a regional fisheries biologist, uh, went back for my PhD. Just applied for jobs and got real lucky and landed a job with the Game and Fish Commission as the statewide stream fisheries biologist and I've been doing it now for almost 20 years. I grew up watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom 
and I think I pretty well knew from the time I was in uh, late grade school or you know middle school or junior high, I, I'm, I pretty well knew what I wanted to do. Um, I went to college expecting to go into medicine, uh, and once there, you know, conversations with people, meeting professors, I learned that um, I could have a career working in fisheries and wildlife. To become a wildlife veterinarian, first I got a bachelor's degree in fish and wildlife biology, and then I went to veterinary school, and then I actually went to graduate school and got a PhD in population health, and that helped me combine those two specialties into what I do now. With the addition of the new Research, Evaluation, and Compliance Division, the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission will continue using science-based management to ensure that our fish and wildlife resources and Arkansas's outdoor heritage will be around for the next hundred years and longer. What we do really makes a big difference for the fish and wildlife populations in the state. If you have a curious mind, uh, it's amazing to have a process to be able to go out and answer the questions that you have. You can't make good management decisions, you can't set good harvest strategies, you can't set good bag limits, and you know, you can't do that responsibly without having good scientific based information. I love science. Science is so exciting because you're learning something new. You have the possibility of learning something that no one has has ever known before and, and sharing that and having a better understanding of the world. When you look at science, especially in the wildlife and the fisheries fields, that means that we're learning about a wild animal. We're able to go out there, many times we're capturing that animal and we're collecting information from that animal. And so it, it, it can be exciting. It's not always sitting in a lab somewhere, it's not always staring at a computer screen, it's actually getting out in the field and, and, and enjoying our wildlife firsthand. Kelly, welcome to the Janet Huckabee Arkansas River Valley Nature Center right here in Fort Smith, Arkansas. We are situated on 170 acres and in that 170 acres we have our 12-acre uh, Wells Lake. It is a wonderful opportunity for us to provide a lot of educational opportunities. Uh, and fun opportunities doing some canoeing and kayaking and fishing and even studying macroinvertebrates here on the lake. Inside the building we've got exhibits focusing on the land between the Ozark and Washita Mountains. So we've got specific uh, geographical uh, exhibits as well as some animal based exhibits talking about fishing and birds, things like that. We also have a room where it's dedicated to hands-on activities for excellent for families and for kids to get hands-on uh, what a, a beaver pelt feels like or uh, a deer skull and things like that. Also we've got animals on display, a lot of reptiles, uh, snakes in particular to get a closer up look at. School groups are an emphasis. We also uh, provide uh, lots of opportunities for families on weekends and uh, we have some evening programs. Uh, in the summertime we do a lot of programming. Uh, spring break is a huge week for us. So we take advantage of those opportunities when people are available and provide educational and, and fun activities for them to do outside. On the weekends we do canoe and kayaks. Uh, we get people out on the lake. A lot of times it's a first experience for them to come out. We do archery on Sundays. Uh, it's an indoor archery range, so it's not weather dependent, so that's very popular. We also uh, offer a hike on Saturday mornings. We, do, we feed an animal every day at two o'clock, and uh, we also have a, an indoor shooting, the laser shot program. We do that on Saturday afternoons as well. There's a lot of people from the community that come and take advantage of the, of the facility. Uh, we get a lot of grandparents bringing the grandkids. Uh, we do have the tackle loaner program, so you can just come out and check out a fishing pole and go fishing. I feel like one of our uh, high points of our facility is to provide first experiences. We give a, a, a wonderful, safe environment to try out some new things outside. We'll get people come back and say, oh, it was because of that program that we did that we now bought some kayaks and we go out, you know, every so often and, and enjoy that. So it does provide a lot of uh, satisfaction for us. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway, 
During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license. At the end of this season, we'll be giving away $500 worth of hunting gear with everything you need for your next hunting adventure. It's all provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage and enter at ArkansasWildlife.com. This week's winner is Ted Holt from McRae. Congratulations and thanks for watching.